Are you watching? He's ready to. For me? Ah. He's ready to. <laughs> and welcome to this uh, November 11th meeting of the Livermore City Council. Uh, this is sort of a hybrid meeting tonight because we are celebrating the uh, summer reading program and uh, in conjunction with the library. Uh, so with that, I'm going to uh, ask the uh, librarian to uh, tell us what tonight's all about. Anwan. Thank you, Honorable Mayor, City Council members. I'm Anwan Baker, the City's Library Services Director. I'm here tonight to present the Super Readers for the Library's 2023 Summer Reading Program. Over 5,200 residents participated in our summer reading program this year, and as a community, we read over 6 million minutes this summer. 1,065 of the children who participated completed the full program to become super readers, and we will be congratulating them here tonight. However, before we begin, I would like to thank a few sponsors whose donations made the summer reading program possible. A big thank you goes to LARPD, East Bay Regional Parks, Quest Science Center, Papa Murphy's Take and Bake Pizza, Chick-fil-A, In-N-Out Burger, and the Friends of the Livermore Public Library. Assistant Library Services Director Nathan Brumley will now be leading us through the rest of the ceremony. Thank you, Director Richter, Honorable Mayor, and City Council members. If you join me down here, we'll get started. <clears throat> Okay, and with that, uh, we'll begin announcing our super readers. Come on down. Great job reading. Uh, we have Claire Ellsworth. Congratulations, Claire. Bodie Schneider. Well done, Bodie. All right, Emily Silva. Patrick Silva. Thank you. Catherine Fetterman. Thanks, Catherine. And Olivia Fetterman. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> you can go together. <laughs> All right. Lila Suther. Thank you, Lila. Adelaide Suther. Great job reading this summer. Sydney Kinzer. Well done, Ken Sydney. And Ramona Kinzer. Nice job, Ramona. Samira Scheich. Well done. All right. <laughs> Jaden Brown. Over here. Well done. Samara Chavda. All right, Samara. Akira Boyle. Hi. Are you coming up too? Hi. Where's mom and dad? Right over there. We'll go with mom. Oh, you're good to go. Go fist bump. Yeah. Oh, you want to fist bump me? Sure. All right, nice. So there's the mayor. Come on down. All right. Uh, Prasha Rout. Well done, Prasha. Right down here. Come on down. Yeah, nice job, Matthew. Matthew Stokes. Well done. Oh, come on down. I know who this is. Morgan Brumley. Good job, Morgan. <laughs> Grayson Barker. Good job, Grayson. All right, Garrett Archins. Well done, Garrett. I'll take this. Reagan Owen. Nice job, Reagan. 
right. Violet Creamers. Well done, Violet. Aditi Kalyanarama. Good job. Uh, Sparsh Sharma. Nice job, Sparsh. Congrats. I'll take your card. Ethan Brabeck. Well done, Ethan. Scarlett Lindy. Jasmine Emerson. Well done, Jasmine. Come on over. Nice. Julia Hunziker. Ebony Cafle. All right, Ebony. Nice job. Ophelia Quiros. Well done, Ophelia. Oliver Quiros. Violet Hansen. Triambi Nanda. Nice job, Triambi. Thanks. Neil Chow. Good job, Rita. Olivia Orson. Well done. Thank you. So what do we have? We have Darsh Gandhi. Yeah, sure. All right, Darsh. Well done, Darsh Gandhi. Good job. Amirani Diaz. Great job. Don't go first. Let's see your card. Brioni Diaz. Okay, Brioni. Go ahead. <laughs> right over there. Yavraj Singh. Yavraj, there you go. <laughs> All right, let's keep it going. Cameron Williams. Well done, Cameron. Amrita Das. Good job, Amrita. You ready? Here, let me read your card. Vidur Gupta. All right, Vidur. Drishti Gupta. Thanks, Drishti. Mata Osmani. Nice job, Mata. Hi. A friend, Osmani. A friend? Congrats. Great job, Reed. Oh, <laughs> we're trying to keep it down that way, right? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Hi. We've got Dia Peace and Adi Peace. Nice job. Good job, Reed. Ida Peace and Shailen Sand. Shailen Sand. Nice job, Shailen. Uh, Shanak Bhattacharji. All right. All right. Cal Amador. Very nice. Good job, Cal. Last oh, friends coming down that way. All right. Dylan Morgiri. Huh? Summer. Thanks. Emma Katinit. Katinit. I'm sorry. Emma Katainik. <laughs> Kayla Estrada. Well done, Kayla. Julian Estrada. All right, Julian. Nice job. Yeah, I'll yeah. All right, we've got Eduardo Gomez Lopez. Nice job. And Fatima Gomez Lopez. Well done. Hi. Yeah, I'll just go you. I'll take your card, though. Quinn Brigida. Kishagra Jadia. Jadia? Jadia. All right. Come on over. All right. We've got Henry Witt. All right. Uh, one second here. All right. Let's keep it going. Anushka McCunz. Hey there. Margo Druid. Mira Wood. Take your car. Thank you. Aiden Harris. Oh, let me ask you guys to go, to go down that way, please. Thank you. Okay. Oh, wait. I'll take your time. There. Vihan Baras. 
All right. Yeah. Right over that way. Camden Copeman. Right. Well done, Camden. Zoe Copeman. Nice job, Zoe. Really. Come on down. Yeah, very nice. Israel Mitchell. Nice job. Tanuchan Mahesmar. Theodore Gonzalez. Michaela Ciarfaligi. Chefalio. I almost know. Lily Chefalio. Jordan Scrivener. Well done, Jordan. Come on over. Anuja Iyer. Mithia Iyer. <laughs> Is this for? <laughs> All right. Naya Morish. Mahir Kultura. Anaga Kini. Arnav Kapula. Thank you, Arnav. Shania Agarwal. Imogen Lockhart. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Come on. All right. Rebecca Rochelle. Eliana Rochelle. All right, you've got your card hidden. All right, let's see this thing. Scarlett Greenwald. Scarlett? Trent Greenwald. Nice job, Trent. Sarai Agarwal. Okay. Emily Arias Thomas. Samantha Arias Thomas. Helen Hagebush. Lucas Hussain. Reina Yoviento. Thea Navalgun. Evelyn Humphrey. All right. Thanks, please. Liam Cargill. Rizwan Mohammed. Eloise Tovar. Harper Tovar. Emma Reyes. Nice looking. Ethan Reyes. Hi. I think Melina Williams, Vihan Raghav Dinesh, Bianca Hess, Hi Fazlik, Kimberly Struglin. Well done, Kimberly. All right. Neve Chibudapati. Anika Chibudapati. Well done. All right. Navan Patab. Juliana Valley. Haley Halamujia. Ali Gohari, Tina Gohari, Arya Valuru, Bahan Patel, 
Sarah Anand. Kevin Anand. Ashvi Singh. Arisha Singh. Evelyn Parrott. Allison Parrott. Iljin Melton Garamis. All right, you've got some fun over You've got your brain there, huh? You want fun time doing summer reading? All right, Aditi Manaconda. Down now. <laughs> you can. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Peter Rosenbrock. Grace Marsh. Lily Martinez. Nice job, Lily. All right. Callum Bethet. All right, good job, Callum. Hey. All right. Josie Gleason. Hold on. Next card. Come on down. Thanks. Dion Fatish. Go ahead, Dion. Osman Oliva. Hey, looking sharp. Orion Fryer. Keisha Katali. Well done, Keisha. Navisha Sina. All right. Rosie Hilliard. All right, Rosie. Arshi Karapati. Anshi Karapati. Bernice Zhao. Good job, Bernice. Ashley Zhao. Isaac Kozemski. Asir Todd. Leo Gulech. Right down that way, Leo. All right, let's have a look at this. Uh, they just been Regan Offen. Avian Chatan. Sarat Jenta. Paris Frugoli. Good job, Paris. You don't believe that. Sienna Frigoli. Well done, Sienna. Diana Frigoli. With that, this concludes our uh, ceremony. Thanks, everybody, for this summer reading. <laughs> Move their face.
Mic check, one, two. Mic check, check, check. Sound okay? Okay, good.
Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. The time is 6.59 and TV 30 will count you in at 7 o'clock. Uh, she's not going to be coming. She's oh, she's, oh, she's going to zoom in. Yeah. Good evening and welcome to this uh, part two of the uh, September 11th uh, Livermore uh, Council meeting. I call the meeting to order. Roll call, please. Councilmember Variantos. Present. Councilmember Branning. Here. Councilmember Carling. Here. Vice Mayor Kick. Here via yeah. Zoom. Mayor Marshad. Wow, she is here. Uh, I'm here. Uh, if you'll please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, uh, Vice Mayor Kick uh, will be participating virtually this evening as a just cause alternative as is allowed for in the Brown Act. Uh, all of the other provisions of the Brown Act for public participation have been satisfied in the city's regular hybrid meeting procedures. Uh, Vice Mayor Kick, is anyone over the age of 18 in the room with you? There is one over 18 member in my household, not currently in the room, but okay. I don't know who's walking where. So just, okay. yes. If, if so, uh, what is their relationship to you? My husband, William, is with me in the house and may or may okay. not walk in this room. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, very good. Thank you very much. Uh, so those of you just tuning in, uh, we just completed our summer reading program uh, where uh, we had literally hundreds of young people that had read thousands of books uh, come through to be congratulated by the city council. And uh, that's one of the, the really the fun things that we get to do. And I think uh, we had uh, over a thousand uh, young people complete the program. So that was, uh, uh, we didn't quite have a thousand here, but uh, but it was really a remarkable uh, event. So that's always a lot of fun. Um, so uh, completely changing gears. Uh, today is the 22nd anniversary of the tragedy of September 11th. Uh, and I would like to ask Deputy Chief uh, Jason Solak uh, from Livermore Pleasant and Fire Department uh, to take the microphone and the podium, please. Mayor, members, staff, community members, public safety partners, uh, just want to say thank you uh, to everybody in the room uh, today as we honor and remember all of the heroes of that fateful day, uh, the profound impact uh, that it had on each and every one of us, and um, the steadfast resilience of the American spirit and uh, our ability to uh, to press on. And with that, uh, I would like everyone to stand and join me in a moment of silence. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Deputy Chief. And thank you to all of the members of the uh, Liberal Plus and Fire Department and the Police Department that are here today. Thank you. And thank you for all of your, for your service. Moving on to item 4.0, it's the open forum. Uh, City Clerk, will you tell people how they can participate in the, in the open forum? Thank you, Mayor. The City Council's agenda provides opportunities for the public to participate in the meeting by addressing the City Council in the following ways. For non-agendized items, the public has the opportunity during open forum to address the City Council on any item of interest that is within the City Council's subject matter jurisdiction. 
For agendized items, the public can address the city council on each item of business it considers when the mayor opens the public comment and should be focused on that particular item. Please note, the speaker is not required to answer any questions from the city council, and the city council is not required to answer questions from the public. However, the mayor has the discretion to ask staff to address the speaker's comments when a council member believes it is relevant to a particular business item. When participating in tonight's meeting, one comment may be given per person, per item. Members of the public can participate in person or remotely as noticed on the agenda. To provide comment in person, please fill out and turn in a speaker card found at the entrance of the council chamber. Speakers will be announced in the order received. We will hear from members of the public who are in person first, followed by those wishing to speak over Zoom. To provide comment by Zoom, please use the raise hand feature or star nine if calling in when the item begins. Please do not wait until the public comment period opens for each item to raise your hand. Instead, raise your hand at the beginning of each item. Once public comment opens, each participant's name will be announced and their three minutes will begin once at the lectern or upon being unmuted. The mayor will announce the conclusion of the public comment period after comments have been voiced into the record. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, very good. Uh, with that, uh, would you kindly uh, start uh, reading the names? Our first speaker is Greg Scott, followed by David McWigan, followed by Marty Sutton. Mr. Mayor, Livermore City Council, City of Livermore staff, audience, I'm Greg Scott. I'm addressing the issue of the last City Council meeting on July 24th, um, the consent calendar 5.3, which was for the EIR past the urban growth boundary east of Greenwood Avenue, which I think is a terrible decision and it's a waste of financial resources. It was, the allotment was 307,697 up to 307,697 dollars. Okay, in the discussion on that meeting, the majority on the city council said that the opponents were afraid of the information in that um, proposed environmental impact report. That, that is false. That's a, a really bad argument. And that argument transcends even how we feel whether we're pro or against this EIR. If we have citizenry that's afraid of information, we have a serious problem. We have a process problem. Mm -hmm. We should be getting citizens informed without fear. If you insist on that argument that we, I being part of the opponents to this wasteful EIR, I accept your challenge. I have a Bachelor of Science from UC Davis, which doesn't make me authority on anything besides reason by authority is a fallacious argument anyway, but I can, in, from my education and my professional experience, I can bombard you with information of why this is a terrible decision on this EIR past the urban growth boundary. You also stated in this discussion that this opponents, none of us were part of a committee. That shouldn't matter. That's a disenfranchisement. Um, it, they, we should be enfranchising the citizens and they should have a voice whether they're on a committee or not. And it's interesting you say that to me because I was homeless in this community continuously for six years, nine months. I survived 27 months homeless during the pandemic. I applied as a homeless person and Evan Browning can attest that I attended the Human Services Commission for two years from... February of 2018 to up to the lockdown in 2020. And I applied to be a human services commission uh, on the human service commission. I interviewed with former uh, councilman um, Warner and newly elected councilwoman Monroe, and I didn't get the position. Well, I, my application was accepted today for your five open positions on the human services commission. So how are you gonna keep me off the human services commission now? That'll be interesting. Um, I wanna make the point to the public that information is not agency. Agency would be rescinding this decision on this EIR past the urban growth boundary east of Greenwood. Thank you. Next speaker is David McQuiggan, followed by Marty Sutton, followed by Kyle Erickson. I'm sure you remember this picture, Johnny. It's a picture of the accident scene. And here it shows a skid mark. Made mark in the road. Now, this is not surprising. In fact, it's expected when there are multiple cars having to slam on their brakes. 
No, the unexpected thing is when the Livermore police took their official evidence photo, the skid mark has somehow magically vanished. If you know, if you are not a lying com corrupt criminal, Johnny, then you must have some simple explanation for how the evidence didn't really disappear. Care to share it? Yeah, I thought not. This is a nice letter I received from Chief Harris. In it, he says that I quote, I am unable to definitively explain why you received only a portion of the audio. So Chief Harris acknowledged the fact that this audio was not properly disclosed. Now, if you're not a lying corrupt criminal, Johnny, you must have a simple, some simple explanation for how the audio, audio was actually properly disclosed. Care to share it? Yeah, I thought not. My complaint was investigated, reviewed, and a determination was made in July 2019. Under California law, that determination was required to be provided to me within 30 days. If you're not a lying, corrupt criminal, Johnny, you must have some simple explanation for how you didn't willfully withhold weren't didn't willfully withhold that determination. Care to share it? Yeah, I thought not. This is a copy of a letter I wrote to Chief Young in November 2020. In it, did I specifically ask about the status of my complaints? If you're not a lying, corrupt criminal, Johnny, you must have some simple explanation for how chief, the chief didn't willfully violate his oath of office to faithfully uphold all the laws of California by joining your conspiracy to willfully withhold the determination required by Carol following your law. Care to share it? Yeah, I thought not. You have chosen to cover up what should be a legal issue and made it a political one. So be it. If you're a lying, corrupt criminal, Johnny, and you will be found out. What year were those photographs taken? What year were those photographs taken? Uh, 2012. 2012, thank you. Week before they took their photos. 11 years ago, thank you. You lied and withheld it for four years, so you're a big part of the problem. Next speaker is Marty Sutton, followed by Kyle Erickson, followed by Brandon Clutton. Good evening. My name is Marty Sutton. I'm the board chair for Tri-Valley Nonprofit Alliance. Founded in 2014, TVNPA is a 501c3 organization with a mission to provide advocacy, collaboration, and education to strengthen our nonprofit organizations in the community. This past May, Alameda County granted TVNPA $1.4 million to lead a coalition to expand community outreach and resource navigation in North Livermore. The two-year award will support TVMPA's anti-poverty collaborative to address the needs of people living near or in poverty. With our partners, Access Community Health, Open Heart Kitchen, Tri-Valley Haven, and City Serve of the Tri-Valley, we have created Livermore Connect. Livermore Connect's goal is to connect the most under-resourced Livermore residents to essential services they need. On August 12th, Livermore Connect hosted its first public outreach event at May Nissan Park. We had over 700 residents attend. Tri-Valley Haven handed out backpacks. Open Heart Kitchen provided food. Access Community Health gave out dental kits. La Familia had vaccinations. And Tri-Valley Air Quality Alliance handed out fans and air purifiers. It was truly the community coming together. I would like to thank Council Member Evan Browning for his support and input for this event. I also want to thank Council Member Carling for joining us and City Manager Mariana Marshava for attending and being so supported by not only promoting this event, but also hosting a table. A big thank you too to Judy Xavier from the city who helped us promote the event and attend. And thank you to School District Board Member Christy Wang for attending. Our next Livermore Connect event will be in partnership with La Familia on November 4th at May Nissan Park. In addition, the Anti-Poverty Collaborative will host our second forum this year on October 5th. This is called Bridging the Gap. Sheila Brooks from the Alameda County Food Bank will moderate. We have three speakers who will focus on the release of the newly revised data report on poverty in the Tri-Valley, basic income pilot projects, and the recent California Homeless Report. At our event back in March on race, poverty, and power, one of our service providers asked, why aren't there more elected officials and policymakers here today? I am asking you to come to this event. We did have Livermore City staff attend in March, but we, it is critical that we have elected officials and more city staff attend this event. 
It'll be um, Bridging the Gap will be held October 5th from 12 to two, sorry, from 10 to 12 at the Bankhead Theater. I do have flyers that currently say it's at um, Maney Sun Park if you would like a flyer, but we did move it to the Bankhead. And lastly, we will be hosting our third annual Power of Giving event on May 8th at the Bankhead. This year, we'll be handing out six awards to the nonprofit community that have been nominated by and voted on by community members. You can learn more about our bu busy fall at tvmpa.org. Thank you. Now, I have flyers here if you want to know more. I give those to the city yeah. clerk. But before you do that, it's uh, not at Hacienda Park, it's at the Bankhead. Okay, so Bridging the Gap, October 5th, 10 to 12 at the Bankhead Theater. Yes. Okay. And we're asking everyone to register at tvmpa.org so we know how many people to, because we'll have food there too. Uh, Mr. Uh, Randy. Before you leave, I just want to check. I think you misspoke. Uh, power of giving. What's the date again for that? November 8th. Thank you. Yes. Did I see the wrong date? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was trying to go fast. I saw my <laughs> so, countdown was coming. November 8th. November 8th. Power Thank of you. giving. Also at the Bankhead Theater, we'll be giving out awards. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Kyle Erickson, followed by Brandon Clutton, followed by Donna Caban over Zoom. Good evening, Mayor and City Council members. I'm Kyle Erickson, and I'm a Livermore resident. I'm also an apprentice in the Sheet Metal Workers Local 104. I want to speak about the huge development that a Los Angeles developer wants to build in our town. Being an apprentice has changed my life. It's given me the kind of career that if I want to stay in my community and raise a family, I will be able to afford it. When Heritage first came to town, they committed to providing hundreds of new apprentice jobs so other Livermore residents can have the same opportunity I've been given. My union trusted them since the Isabel neighborhood plan you approved saying that it's a priority for our city and rightfully so. Now Heritage is breaking their word. They wanna build the project paying construction workers wages that will undercut my wages and they won't commit to using any apprentices. It's not that they can't afford to, other developers in the Tri-Valley are doing the right thing and have signed agreement to use the local workforce and have apprentices on the job. A few thousand Livermore residents make their living in the trades. Heritage, Heritage's plans hurts every one of them. I hope you stand with us to make sure they do the right thing. My union is meeting with Heritage again next week. We will have someone here at your next meeting to let you know how that went. Thank you. Next speaker is Brandon Clinton, followed by Donna Caban over Zoom. Good evening, Council. Mayor, my name is Brandon Clutter. I've lived in Livermore my entire life, and I am apprentice with Local 104 as well. Um, I'm here to talk to you about the Herd Heritage Development as well. They are planning to build hundreds of homes. Thank you to the the uh, Isabel Neighborhood Plan from a few years ago, and we have had do dozens of our union members that have participated in community meetings before the plan was passed. And we are proud that our council stood up for working families when you did pass that plan. Uh, Harrison said they would meet those commitments when that, with that plan when they first got here. Now they said they won't, and they're blaming the city, asking that a very small, small number of the houses be sold below market price. That would, they know they have, the problem with that is that they know they have some affordable housing from the beginning, and they are planning to take that away. They would undercut apprentice wages, and we would not like that. That does not work for us, and we do not want to see housing taken away. Um, you can help hold Heritage to their word when they meet again. You've stood up. So you've stood up for us before, and we'd like to see you stand up for us again. Thank you. Final speaker is Donna Caban. Donna Caban, please unmute yourself and announce the item you'd like to speak to. Good evening. Your recent, you recently received a letter from the Bay Area Air Quality Management District dated September 8th concerning the continued use of leaded aviation fuel at the airport. Please consider the following statements made in the letter. The Air District supports the EPA's finding that lead emissions from aircraft that 
operate on leaded AB gas cause or contribute to air pollution, endangering public health and welfare. We share a serious concern the continuing and ir that continuing and irreversible damage that leaded AB gas can inflict on Bay Area constituents, particularly to the health and development of exposed children, the safety of airport workers, and the welfare of airport adjacent communities. Leaded AV gas exposure also has the potential to compromise the safe operation of many publicly owned airports. Eliminating lead air pollution from AV gas should be treated as an urgent public health priority by local governments in the Bay Area. We write this letter in support of local government's efforts to phase out leaded AV gas from the use of general aviation airports. We understand that the Livermore Municipal Airport is considering taking steps in this direction, and we wholeheartedly support those efforts. As of January 2020, Santa Clara County has banned the sale of leaded AV gas. The Livermore City Council is the public agency that controls the airport. UL 94, unleaded AV gas is available now. So question one, what specific steps are you taking to prohibit aircraft who use leaded AV gas from using the airport? Question two, when will these steps be implemented? Please add possible next steps on the next city agenda. This urgent public health issue must remain a top priority. Protect Livermore and all Tri-Valley residents. Thank you. Mayor, that was the final speaker. Are there any speakers? There's no no okay. additional speakers. So we're good. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, I'm going to close the public hearing uh, or put, close the public comment period for the open forum. Uh, moving on to the consent calendar. Is there anybody who would like to pull uh, items for consent? Councilmember Barrientos? 5.4 and 5.6? Okay. Um, is there anybody else who would like to uh, pull any of the items for discussion? Okay. Um, let's... Uh, uh, okay, so do we have a presentation for 5.4? Yes, Honorable Mayor and members of the City Council, this is your City Manager, Mariana Marashova. We do have a brief presentation on item 5.4 by Paul Spence, Director of Community Development. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. So item 5.4 before you is uh, to authorize the City Manager to execute an agreement related to the environmental review of the Tri-Valley Havens Emergency, Emergency Shelter Project. Uh, the cities of Pleasanton and Livermore had previously committed to providing community development block grant funding, that's federal funding for this project, and that funding requires environmental review. Uh, the city of Dublin more recently has also decided to commit CDBG funding to this project, and so uh, it will be a simpler process and more expeditious if all three agencies co uh, collaborate together on the environmental review. And so this revision to the agreement would allow Dublin and Alameda County to contribute to the environmental review. It will save all cities uh, time and money. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'll just handle these all at the same time. Do we have a presentation then for 5.6? And then I'll uh, call for public comment. Yes, Mr. Mayor, we have a presentation by Director of Innovation and Economic Development, uh, Brandon Cardwell. Good evening, Mayor and members of the City Council. Uh, the item before you, 5.6, is a resolution authorizing the City Manager to enter into a grant agreement with Livermore Downtown, Inc. in the amount of $90,000 to support uh, the programs and services offered by that organization. Since 1986, the city and Livermore Downtown Inc. have partnered on our common mission to enhance economic growth, assist downtown businesses, and promote the downtown as a vibrant destination for residents and visitors. 
As part of the funding agreement, LDI provides an annual report, um, which captures the prior year's accomplishments and plans for the forthcoming year. That report is included in tonight's agenda packet and highlights include an array of family-friendly events like the seasonal and year-round farmer's markets, Kids Town Halloween heyday, Witches Night Out, Earlier Than the Bird, Home for the Holidays Parade in Livermore, in downtown Livermore, the Livermore Half Marathon, and of course the Downtown Street Fest. Uh, additionally, Livermore Downtown Inc. is a critical partner in maintaining open communication lines between the city and downtown merchants, um, which has been especially important during the downtown construction that's been underway for the last couple of years. Uh, LDI helps coordinate monthly construction update meetings between the merchants and city staff, as well as offering text and email communication channels for important information and updates from the city. Uh, for the coming year, LDI will continue to support communication efforts during downtown construction, as well as new initiatives like implementation of the city's climate action plan. Uh, for the coming year, I'm sorry, uh, LDI will also look to expand important initiatives like the Livermore Valley Made campaign, arts promotion in the downtown, business training, and growing Livermore's tourism and visitation economy um, as called for in the city's strategic plan. Uh, thank you. That concludes my report, and I'm available for any questions. LDI also has representatives here tonight. Okay. Uh, do we have any public comment? Yes, we the, do, Mayor. Pardon me? Okay, we yes, do. Yes, we do. All right. Let's, let's call them up. First speaker is Greg Scott, item 5.4. And I'm sorry, I'm going to announce speakers in the order of the items of consent calendar. So I know you have two. I'm going to do it in order of each item. Okay. Um, Greg Scott, I'd like to commend the city of Livermore for what they're doing on this, um, spreading the resources and taking some of the burden off the city of Livermore and the city of Pleasanton and involving the city of Dublin and the county of Alameda in this, um, the resources to go toward the emergency shelter rebuild of Tri-Valley Haven. I also commend the city of Livermore and those involved in addressing the National Environmental Policy Act, uh, Title 24, a Code of Federal Regulations, Part 58, and meeting the housing and urban development, environmental NEPA concerns with this project. Um, soon we will have additional resources as far as Vineyard 2.0 and the uh, refuge at 2.0. All in all, this isn't enough. Uh, I watched too many people. I knew I was acquainted with too many people out there that died during, were homeless and died during the pandemic and we need more emergency shelters. It's critical that we expand this beyond just the demography that is to be um, addressed with the Tri-Valley Haven Emergency Shelter. So um, it, it's brutal. I, I knew these people that died and it, I don't feel that it needed to be uh, Will and Jaime and your favorite Richard French and Soledad, explain to me how a woman homeless survives out there. I don't know. Okay, thank you. The next speaker is Ruby Lopez Villarreal, sorry, Villarreal, um, for item 5.6. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council Members. I'm Ruby Lopez Villarreal, Executive Director of Livermore Downtown, Inc. LDI would like to express our sincere gratitude to the City of Livermore for this critical partnership. This year, I'm proud to share that our new Board of Directors, who are also some of the community faces that represent your beloved downtown businesses, and who are also here with us this evening, work to develop our new vision and mission statement. And I'm very happy to be able to share it with you here this evening. I think it's very applicable. A vision. Livermore Downtown Inc. is committed to keeping the heart of Livermore strong so the entire community can thrive. Mission. Through partnerships, LDA advocates for our downtown business community by promoting economic growth, preserving our heritage, attracting tourism, and fostering an environment where families want to live, work, and play. I think that sounds beautiful. I'm sure you agree. Vital partnerships such as the one with the city of Livermore is what helps to make our shared vision a reality. We look forward to continuing to support our downtown businesses as we forge ahead together with you, as well as our community partners and all stakeholders to work towards the shared goals of the continued strengthening of our downtown business community. Thank you so much and have a good evening. 
The final speaker is Greg Scott for item 5.8. Five point eight. We're on the Greg Scott. We're on infrastructure and in infrastructure expenditure. Um, this is the information part of my open forum part of the my talk. I contend that the city of Livermore doesn't know what they're up against as far as future rainfall, for example, and the, the changes we face. Um, we don't have, we're not projecting what we're going to face. We don't have the resources to protect, maintain, and defend our current restructure, our current infrastructure. So it becomes absurd to me that we want to entertain the fact for $307,000 that we're going to expand our current infrastructure. The number one component out there of the atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean is the Pacific Walker circulation. If we don't understand that, we don't understand what we're facing. That circulation has been slowing since the start of the Industrial Revolution. That means the probability of extreme rainfall and its duration is going to be longer and more intense. That means the droughts in between the rainfall sessions are going to be longer. We don't know if human activities have anything to do with the Pacific Walker circulation. So that takes the argument out of the culture wars and the divisive partisan politics. We do know that, unfortunately, from science that goes into the culture wars and the divisive party politics, that 37 to 38 billion metric tons of carbon dioxide are having a serious effect in additional energy gain. We know that 361 zettajoules of additional energy in those oceans out there. For the public, joule is the international system unit of energy. Zeta is 10 to the 21st power. That's a thousand billion billions. 361,000 billion billions of energy out in those oceans. That doesn't mean anything to you. Equate it to your electric bill. That's 13,000 trillion kilowatt hours of electricity. I think that's slightly past tier one rates. That energy in the ocean, so what? This last North American summer, we measured an average sea surface temperature between 60 degrees south latitude and 60 degrees north latitude, 69.7 degrees. That means the mass of va water vapor pressure over each square foot of that Pacific Ocean out there is 50 pounds. Now all you have to do is calculate how many square feet of Pacific Ocean are out there. I'll give you a hint. Pacific Ocean is 32% of the entire surface area of the planet. What this means is we have a lot more fodder for atmospheric rivers. Study the event of December 1861 to 1862. Not many people here, but well, we have a goal. Look what's happening around the world. Hubei province evacuated a million people outside of Beijing. How are we at evacuating 90,000 and we're gonna expand our infrastructure? Doesn't make sense. That concludes public comment. Okay, I will close the uh, public comment uh, and the public hearing on this and bring it back to the council. Uh, Councilmember Barrientos, did you have uh, uh, any particular comments that you wanted to, to make on this? No, for personal edification. Okay, very good. A uh, couple of comments. Uh, first off, uh, 5.8 is simply to adopt a resolution of continued local emergency in response uh, to the impacts of the storms that we had already uh, uh, engaged and already experienced this year. Uh, so that's, uh, uh, and on the other hand, we did have a wonderful uh, youth-led uh, Live More Youth Climate Action Summit this weekend that I was uh, fortunate and, and privileged to present at uh, and talking with the, the young people and the enthusiasm that they have uh, to, to take on uh, climate change and uh, to take that, act that action. So that was very exciting. Uh, but this is really just continuing the resolution of the local emergency, not, uh, uh, not dealing on a worldwide level. Um, with uh, uh, LDI, uh, one of the things I, I talk about with the city is the city doesn't do anything fun. Uh, city does, uh, and I mean us. You know, uh, we don't do uh, uh, we don't do parades. Uh, we don't do uh, uh, farmers markets. Uh, what we do is we do police, fire, 
public safety, public works, the things that 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 make a city work. Uh, but my sincere gratitude to Livermore Downtown Inc. Uh, and Rotary uh, and the, the Park District, because you are the ones that do the fun stuff, uh, the parades, the farmers markets, the bringing people together in the community. And that's really how our community succeeds is when we can bring the people together and celebrate our community. So my thanks uh, to Livermore Downtown, to Rotary, to uh, the Park District, all those folks that they get to do the fun things uh, while we do the things that the city has to have uh, you guys do the, the things that we, we let, we get to have. So thank you for all the, uh, the great work that all of you do. Um, any other comments from the uh, council member Branning? Thank you. Uh, yeah. I serve on the LDI board as a liaison as well. So I'm many other meetings. Uh, I just really wanted to take a moment. I didn't expect this to be pulled. So I was just going to make some comments about how great they are. Uh, so I worked with LDI for a while now, uh, even before I ran for office as a planning commissioner and just as a member of the community. And I wanted to say that for item 5.6, first of all, it is a very impressive report for anyone who hasn't had an opportunity mm -hmm. to read it. It is, I believe, somewhere just shy of 70 pages and every page has at least one event on it. Many of them have multiple events on them, which just shows the breadth of what LDI is doing. This investment of uh, ninety thousand dollars, yes, ninety thousand dollars, I think is honestly less than we should be putting into LDI. I think for every dollar we spend, we are getting much more than that back as a community. So I see LDI as a tremendous investment for all of us. It really makes for our amazing downtown, amazing events, and they actually spread a lot of the activities touch on different parts of the city not just downtown. Uh, I also want to just take a moment to specifically thank Ms. Lopez Villarreal for being an amazing leader of LDI. Uh, I think she's done an incredible job of taking an already successful enterprise and expanding it, giving it new ideas, fresh look, and really just taking something that was so awesome and expanding it even further. With all of that said, I feel I'd be remiss as the liaison to not say if there are any businesses out there who are in the downtown region and you are not already a member of Livermore Downtown Inc. It is not expensive and your investment is worth every penny. So I encourage any businesses who have not yet signed up to please sign up, join, get involved. A lot of the amenities that you love downtown come from LDI, not from the city. So please, if there are any businesses listening who have not yet joined, please do. Thank you. Councilor Carling. I'll move the consent calendar. Okay. Um, let's see. Let me. Uh, uh, does uh, the vice mayor wish to make any comments? Uh, I I second oh. what what Evan said, and I will uh, remind everybody that we do the library and the library is pretty fun, but um, <laughs> but we do a lot of the uh, less fun uh, but necessary stuff too. I will go ahead and second the consent calendar. Okay, great. Moved in and seconded. And so at the Little League World, uh, Little League Intermediate World Series, uh, we had all the athletes downtown uh, at, uh, at Stockman Park. And so I got a chance to talk to a lot of the kids, a lot of the families. And one of the kids looked up and he said, your downtown is just like Disneyland. And I thought, yeah, so well done. Well done. Uh, Councilor Briantos, any other comments? Nope. Okay. Uh, with that, uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, roll call, please. Councilmember Barrientos. Aye. Councilmember Branning. Aye. Councilmember Carling. Aye. Vice Mayor Kick? Aye. Mayor Marchand? Aye. Okay, with that, uh, we've gone through the uh, consent calendar. Moving on to uh, item 6.1. This is a hearing to receive and consider protests related to the annual fire hazard abatement program and confirm the 2023 weed abatement assessments for collection by the assessor tax roll. 
Mayor Marshan, members of the City Council, this is CEO City Manager Mariana Marashava. Item 6.1 is going to be presented by Deputy Fire Chief Ryan Rucker. Thank you. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and Council Members. Ryan Rucker, Fire Marshal for Livermore Pleasanton Fire. On March 13th, the Council adopted Resolution 2023-035, declaring existing conditions of growing weeds, accumulated rubbish, dirt, and private streets, parkways, and sidewalks adjacent to each parcel of real property are a public nuisance and should be abated. On April 10th, the Council ordered the abatement of hazardous vegetation on the parcels identified in Exhibit A of the attached resolution and declared that the abatement costs, including administrative costs incurred by the city are the responsibility of the property owner. A schedule has been provided to all property owners, which includes abatement, abatement timelines of work needed based on parcel type, as well as administrative costs, which are charged when the city performs the abatement. Of 252 parcels inspected starting June 1st, the fire department concluded hazardous vegetation abatement on three parcels in July at a cost of $4,859, a compliance rate of over 98%. One parcel owner at 2768 Collier Canyon Road of those three has reimbursed our cost of $2,665. The public hearing tonight is to consider any and all protests, and if council finds it appropriate, adopt a resolution overruling protests Confirm the 2023 weed abatement assessments and direct staff to forward a certified copy of the assessment report to the county auditor. Counts, uh, the county auditor staff is available for questions. Councilor Brennan. Just a quick question to make sure I heard correctly. So there were three properties in the agenda, but one of them has paid since. So That's correct. Two properties now. Yes. Thank you. Uh, on, on the table, it shows uh, uh, the three properties uh, total due 2600, 2600, and 2194 doesn't add up. It adds up to 4859. Uh, and looking at it, it looks like it'd be about uh, uh, 7,000. That would include the 4859 and the 2665 that was paid. So we own the, the uh, our cost is actually the 4859. And the twenty six sixty five is what uh, what the property owner reimbursed us. It would have been the number you referenced earlier, the seven thousand. Okay, yeah, because it, uh, it did the the table doesn't add up. The, there was a, a little glitch in the table. <laughs> Apologies for okay. that, sir. I just just so that you know, we pay attention to this stuff. Absolutely, and I okay. appreciate that. Okay, very good. All right, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. This is your city hearing. Just to clarify, so that item will be removed if the council were to adopt this resolution. Um, I would request that the motion include the direction to remove that property from Collier Canyon from okay. the exhibit A. I will. Let's see. First off, oh. we need to open the public hearing to see if there are any protests or uh, or comments. Are there any? Uh, uh... There are no protests or comments. Okay. In that case, I'm going to close the public hearing on 6.1. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mayor. Uh, we do have a, a raised hand over Zoom. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. So we have a raised hand. Our next speaker is Alan. Please unmute yourself. Alan Marling, Livermore resident. I just wanted to briefly say I'm a huge support of uh, controlling fire hazards. My favorite way to do this is with goat grazing. Uh, it's delightful Alan, to see Alan, we are not the... able to hear you. Well, can you hear me now? I can see you on the closed captioning, but we cannot hear you through your speaker. Well, can you hear me at this point? No, I'm sorry, we still can't hear you. All right, well, I tried. Sorry, Mayor and Council, he said he tried. He's not able to, we're not able to hear him this evening. Okay. Uh is Mr. Marling one of the properties that we are considering? No. No, he's not. Okay. Because I, I didn't want, if he was calling to protest, um, I didn't want his 
uh, protest has to be excluded. Okay. Yeah, and Mayor, he did respond and said no. I can see in the closed captioning. Um, I could hear him over Zoom, which is strange. Um, he was just supporting uh, general fire abatement and encouraged us to use goats to graze because that's fun and keeps fire away. So I guess I'm reporting for Alan because I okay. could hear him, but nobody else could. <laughs> Okay. So let's, I'm sorry, Mayor, let's give him one more try. Um, our IT department said that it was the screen sharing. So Alan, can you unmute yourself one more time? All right. I Can you hear there me now? Okay. Yes. Yeah, I wish I had something more uh, topical to say, but in general, I appreciate the uh, measure to make fires less serious before they start. That's the best way to uh, control fires. I My favorite way is with the pop-up goats. Uh, but I certainly appreciate the work the fire uh, uh, fire department does in controlled burns. And third, a distant third is sending out people with lawnmowers. I think that's a lot less appealing and less good for the environment. So thank you for your work. That concludes public comment. Okay, uh, with that, uh, I'm going to close the uh, public hearing. Uh, and then bring it back to the council. Any questions by the council? Um, do I have a motion? I'll move staff recommendations with the uh, amendment to exhibit A. Second. Okay, moved by Council Member Branning, seconded by Council Member Barrientos. Uh, roll call, please. Council Member Barrientos? Aye. Council Member Branning? Aye. Council Member Carling? Aye. Vice Mayor Kick? Aye. Mayor Marchand? Aye. Okay, uh, on to uh, uh, item seven, that's uh, uh, matters initiated and council reports. Uh, let's go with uh, council member Branning this time. Thank you very much. Uh, so <clears throat> as you can see from the supplemental materials, our August recess is anything but. Uh, it is quite extensive, the amount of activities. I'm not gonna go through them. I will be here all night. Uh, so I'm gonna just, I just have two things that are not on that list. Uh, first of all, just uh, for everyone to know, I will not be at the next council meeting. I have a work conflict. And then uh, I'd like to ask our city attorney, just very briefly, uh, there was recently a county ruling about a cemetery north of the urban growth boundary. I just wanted to know if the city is currently looking into the issue and how we may be able to respond. All right, um, so Councilman Brandy, if you're referring to this, I think what was we're calling the cemetery project. Yes. Yes, uh, so the staff in the city attorney's office has met and continues to meet with the uh, staff members in the planning division to both analyze the decision made by the County Board of Supervisors as well as County's Measure D uh, to determine whether it's consistent. We will be preparing a joint memo, uh, attorney-client memo to the city council based upon our findings and analyzing that. There'll be That will be an attorney-client communication. And if it's warranted, we will schedule a closed session to let you know what your options are. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councilor Carling. Yes, I did not uh, do the electronic version because I was on an airplane when it was due. So um, I'm going to go through my list um, since the last meeting. So on the 26th of July, I had a stop waste meeting. And um, there was also the TVN, TA, VA, PR, and wine um, event that day as well that I attended. On the 27th, uh, we Several of us went to the wine country luncheon at Ravenswood, very nice event. On the 29th of July, uh, I participated, as the mayor mentioned earlier, of the opening ceremonies for the Intermediate Little League. And then on the 30th, had the pleasure of um, joining my oldest grandson to throw out the first pitch at the noontime game. On um, August 1st, I participated in National Night Out. Uh, it's a wonderful event. I think there are over 40 um, spots within the city hosting um, uh, events for their individual blocks or areas in the city celebrating National Night Out. It was really quite well attended by the community and uh, by uh, our police officers and others 
that uh, spent time going around to the various uh, block parties. On the 11th, um, at Cornerstone, they had a national health center. They have um, up at Cornerstone, they do this every week, but I know the mayor and I were, were invited on that particular day and had a, a nice opportunity of meeting and seeing all the resources that are there for those people that need that kind of help up at Cornerstone Church. Um, I think Ms. Sutton, uh, Sutton already talked about the main incident event on the 12th of August, um, Salud e Sol, another great event um, and to bring to helping those that um, are most of need in our community. And I'm glad to know that uh, we've got other ones planned for the future. That's uh, terrific. Uh, see on the 16th, I know the mayor and I and the city manager were at Blessing of the Grapes out of Las Positas Vineyard. Later that day at LAVMA, which is the Livermore Amador Valley Water Management Agency board meeting, of which I am now the president of that. And so on the 24th, I did a Zoom with the Bay Area Housing Finance Authority, which is an interesting group set up a few years ago by the uh, state legislator to legislature to figure out how to help uh, support and pay for low income and affordable housing in the state because it often can be a, a challenge to get the funding for those sorts of uh, developments. And so it was interesting learning about, about that. Um, I don't know how many people were on the Zoom, but it was, an, I, it was interesting to me to learn about that and uh, see what resources are available in the state for those sorts of housing, housing developments. Thank you very much. Okay, well, thank you. And congratulations or condolences on uh, ascending to the chair. Uh, Councilmember what Berantos. happens when you're on city council for as long as I've been. <laughs> That's right. Well, they recognize talent. That's the important thing. Well, mine was on. I did electronically, so you can read that up. Um, a lot of my activities were with the Lions Club, so I was busy doing that. And uh, we did send money to Lahaina from our Lions Club treasury. Very good. Well, thank you. Thank you for doing that and for supporting those uh, those causes. Um, yes, as uh, Council Member Branding said, uh, uh, you know, supposedly we went dark in, in August. And, and if you look at my uh, uh, report out, it was two pages. Uh, so this has been a very extraordinary busy time. Regardless, I would like to highlight a couple of things, though. Uh, the National Light out, there were 48 uh, block parties. Uh, I think I went to eight or 10 of them uh, myself. But it was uh, bringing the community together having neighbors looking out after neighbors, uh, part of the uh, neighborhood watch program. Uh, it really is uh, a great program. So support for that. Uh, on the 14th of August, we uh, went on a district tour, the, the local mayors, along with uh, uh, Congressman Swalwell. Uh, we toured Access Healthcare, uh, also Vineyard 2.0, the, uh, the new facility that's gonna be uh, the new home for uh, Open Heart Kitchen. And also got an update on Valley Link, uh, which really uh, looks to be a game changer, uh, hydrogen powered uh, and connecting the mega region, uh, San Joaquin Valley to, uh, uh, to Silicon Valley. Uh, on the 31st, there was the Mayor's Summit for the Tri-Valley. So we had the five Tri-Valley mayors coming together and talking about issues that are important to all of us. And one of the things that's really remarkable about the Tri-Valley is that we all work together. Uh, and that's uh, one of the reasons that we get as much as we do from Washington, D.C., uh, is because they recognize that we are working together as a region. Um, on the uh, uh, Saturday, the 9th, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it was the Livermore Youth Climate Action Summit. Uh, really a remarkable program. Uh, things that uh, uh, how enormous the problem is and some of the great efforts that are being made incrementally to make a difference. And the, the enthusiasm and the passion of these young people uh, was really quite refreshing. And uh, it gives you hope that uh, there is, uh, there's a way through this. Uh, so with that, as I said, if you're really interested, you can go through the other two pages. Uh, with that, I see no... Oh. Yeah, wait for me, John. I'm sorry? I didn't do mine oh, yet. Yes, I'm sorry. Brittany, <laughs> there you are. That's okay. I figured it. I'm looking for you in front of me here, and you're not there. So <laughs> sorry, that's Brittany. Um, uh, on 822 was a lot to finance uh, committee meeting. 
on September 7th. Um, I uh, was happy to go to the state of the Tri-Valley. And then earlier today, we had a LAFTA board meeting. So those are my report outs. Um, I just wanted to give a, a quick shout out to staff. Um, uh, so, and, and a shout out to our um, planning commissioner, Stephen Dunbar, who helped me connect these dots and, and why this was important. He's very active um, uh, on Nextdoor and noticed that there were some issues um, in Springtown, um, some traffic concerns very specifically, um, and there were concerns of community members and how they were being communicated with. Um, and Malika um, uh, Ramachandran did a, a great job and uh, got a specific call out in messages to um, to us. And that doesn't happen very often where uh, we get a thank you letter for sending out a letter. Um, so I just wanted to give a shout out to them and, and thanks uh, to our committee members who go above and beyond um, and keeping us informed on all things going around in our community. So that's all I had. Thank you very much. <clears throat> you left out the most important part about the uh, state of the Tri-Valley. And that was the fact that you were recognized as one of the top 20 uh, folks uh, under 40-ish. Uh, and we also had uh, uh, Ruby Lopez Villarreal was uh, another one that was recognized. So we had uh, several folks from-, from Yeah, Liverpool. we had a we had a nice Livermore contingent. I was- yeah. uh, you were lucky to be part of a good group, a good class of 2023. I'm excited to see who our next class is. Well, we've got a, a great uh, a great team that's working here. So thank you and congratulations for your uh, for your recognition as well. Thank okay. you. Okay, now, <laughs> okay, so we've gotten through the program. Um, any uh, any committee reports or matters initiated by uh, uh, staff? No, Mr. Mayor. Okay, with that case. Uh, we are going to adjourn into a closed session. Uh, is there anyone that wishes to address the council on the closed session? There are no speakers, Mayor. No speakers, no speaker cards. Okay, with that, we are going to adjourn into closed session. Thank you one and all for being here tonight. Pardon me? You're assuming you're not staying. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat>
the next council meeting. Thank you very much. Have a good evening.